Hey guys, Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if this boost regulator, DC-DC converter, adds any noise to this Class AB amplifier. We know it improves the performance by providing regulated a little higher voltage than say you get off a car. Off 12 volt you can get the optimized voltage for the max voltage this guy's allowed so you get the most dynamic range. So that's a good thing, but does it add noise? So what we're going to do, we're going to power this up with this HP power supply. Nice linear regulated power supply. And we're going to check the noise on the Spectrum and THD. Then we're going to connect this boost regulator and do it again. Alright? So this ought to be quick. Let's go ahead and do it. Hey, by the way, I did some earlier videos where I showed how to uh, use this boost to improve the performance dynamic range of this Board. So uh, you may want to look at that video. There's been a couple videos on this Class AB. It's kind of a small guy, but it's pretty impressive. All right. And the other thing we're going to do, if I haven't pointed it out, is we have this up preamp. It has a Bluetooth. I'm going to use my phone and an application that I can put a signal out, say a one kilohertz signal, so that we can use that as our reference signal. All right. Okay. So let's go do this. All right, guys. This is a setup. We've got the amplifier right here. This is the TDA 7377 Pro, the Drock. And I've got the load, the 4 ohm load, resistive load, tied to the output terminal here. I got these copper lugs coming out and, and using these little clips to hold them down. Then I've got the THD meter clipped on here. And I have my oscilloscope Pro. So I can monitor both with the oscilloscope and the THD. This guy uh, measuring the input current. So we've got the red wire coming from the power supply. It comes into the current, out the common, and comes over here to the input. And then the return is this blue wire tied to the red wire that goes back to the power supply right here. Okay. Then I'll probably use this thermometer to take a picture. We'll see if I have time for that, because right now we're just really worried about the noise. Plus I'm gonna have a fan blowing just so that I can run a, a power, not worry about thermo. So I may not take the picture, okay? I've done that before. So anyway, that's, that's the setup. Here's the fan. I'll turn that on when I get going, okay? And it's pretty loud. Once I've done the test with this coming in, then what I'm going to do is simply hook this power supply up to these two leads into this boost and tie these two leads here into the power supply. I'll probably keep the camera on the scope and just tell you that I've hooked that up, okay? So that's just sitting here ready to be jumpered in. Alright guys, I also forgot to show you the, the input, the preamp board I'm using. It's wired right here to the input, same place, and it is... Got it has the hope I don't pull the wires off. It has the Bluetooth module right there, so it can read Bluetooth or you can put a signal into this end and it puts it out here into the into the drock right there. So we we'll use this guy here through my uh, phone to uh, play a one kilohertz signal. All right, and this is the big old uh, bench supply. It's a it's an old HP uh, power supply. It's kind of funny. It says the Harrison 6274A. That shows you how old this thing is. Anyway, it's Hewlett Packard, 0 to 60 volts, 0 to 15 amps. So I've got it set up for about the same power supply, about 17 and a half volts, which the boost is going to give. So it's putting out. The, about the same voltage as the boost will so so it'll be a good comparison then all I'm going to do is put this jumper this balloon into the black pin and it'll power up my uh, setup down here all right guys and this is the Keithley 2015 THD multimeter uh, it's set on THD right now it's showing overflow because there's no signal <laughs> so uh, and it'll be set for THD plus noise okay all right, and the setup of the scope, I'm coming in channel one, and it's set up AC coupling, one mega ohm impedance, inverts off bandwidth, full bandwidth, and 10x on the probe setup. And I'm set for five volts per division, and we're set at 500 microseconds per division on the, 
on the horizontal scale. And we're triggering on channel one. It's the only thing we got to trigger on. And right now it's set for 400 millivolts, just barely off the zero line. And it's DC coupled and rising edge. And the scope's waiting for a trigger. <laughs> All right, so that's the scope setup. Now we'll go to the spectrum setup when we're ready, when we have a signal. All right, guys, we're gonna plug in power. Takes just a moment, the green light popped up on the amplifier, the blue light on the Bluetooth board. And I'm going to hit the play, see if we're, yep, we're ready to go. Okay, so we've got one volt RMS coming out. Let's bring it up. moment here, I'll turn on the fan so you'll hear that, unfortunately. Or if we go quick, I guess maybe we don't need to. But right there, we are... Okay, there's clipping. We're at 0.1%. And... Just under that, we're but right around 10 volts where we start to clip. Just just over 10 volts, we hit 0.1 percent. So let's bring it down to 9 volts. All right, uh, distortion is about 0.04 percent at almost 9 volts. It's kind of hard to get exactly right there, but yeah. So we're about 0.04 percent. All right. So we'll just remember that. And uh, normally. When they do these tests, by the way, they do it one kilohertz, one watt. So we're a little bit above that, right? So we're about uh, 81 divided by 4. All right, guys. I just turned it down so we could cool off a little bit. Then I'll turn it back up. Otherwise, I'm going to have to run that fan. It's kind of noisy. But that was 17.45 uh, volts in, about 1.8 amps in. And we had about 9 volts out, and that's in the 4 ohms. All right, so let's see. Let me, let's bring that back up again real quick. Take a look at it. Just confirm the measurements. Yeah, that's right at It's 8.96. It's real close to 9 volts. but So that's about 20 watts out, 31 watts in. It's about 64% efficiency. And we're about 0 0.04, 0 0.05% distortion. All right, turn the signal down while I adjust this. I hit this and then hit spectrum. And you can do this, by the way, with your FFT. I'm just doing the spectrum because it's quicker. Uh, I can do some videos showing how to do the FFT as well because everybody has FFT and that way you can follow it. But just trying to keep this video short enough Okay, I'm going to start at 1 hertz and go to 500k hertz. That's where it's set up. 250k is right here in the middle, and it's about 50k per division. With 500k here and uh, 1 hertz down here at the start. Here's the, the idea, is I'm going to bring up the distortion. 1 kilohertz is going to be, this 50k, so 1 kilohertz is going to be way over here. We're just going to see if we see any noise, and then we're going to compare that with the switching power supply. Okay, here we go, bringing up the volume. Okay, there we go. See, you can see 1K, the energy out here. And there's some spikes right around in here. So that is about 350 kilohertz, I think. And there's 30 dB right there, minus 30. So they're just under minus 30. And other than that, it kind of slopes down here, down about 50K. And then it's about flat except for there. So that's pretty clean. Not sure what this is coming from. Okay, I'm going to bring the volume back down again. So now you see it go flat. So that those spikes were coming from our system because they're gone with the signal. The amplified signal dropped. So let's go back to frequency and span. Go start. Let's change the stop to 20 kilohertz. Okay, now we're back there. Now 10 kilohertz is in the middle and 20K here. Okay, here we go. Okay, brought it back up. There's the one kilohertz. And there's 30. We see some down here under 40 and one right there. So there's some noise, but it's not too bad. Again, the Keith Lee right now is saying 0.13. Okay, that's that's pretty clean. Let's put on the switcher and see what happens. Hey guys, you know, I just thought about something. I have this ability to go 
to max hold. Let me turn that on. What it does is it saves the maximum signal it sees. So now I'll bring the signal back up again. That's our one kilohertz. And see, we're going to have these scenes saved. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. All right, drop that down. And see how it saved that image. So what we're going to do is put the switcher on. We're going to go right back to here before doing anything else. And we're going to see what how that compares. All right, I'm plugging power back in. I hope I got all the connections right. Oh, all the lights came on. <laughs> all right. I, I really don't like to do the smoke tests like that. I usually am very careful and bring things up slow, but I was really careful how I had these hooked up. All right, guys, here we go again. I'm going to play it, see if it's hooked up yet. Okay, I'm just waiting for the Bluetooth to make a connection. Okay, there it goes. Okay, I'm going to crank up the power. And check to see if you see any new spikes pop up. I don't think I see anything new, right? I don't see anything new. Okay, I'm going to delete that yellow one and see if this one forms the same thing. Okay, now I'll turn it back on. You know, it looks like it's forming the same pattern. So, I don't think there's any difference. I don't think this switcher has added any noise to the audio spectrum. Now this is down 20 kilohertz and that switcher is switching a high frequency. So now let's spread out the band to 500k. Okay, start 1 hertz just to make sure. Okay. Wow, that to me looks the same as well. We have these two things out here and it slopes off and you know I don't see any difference with this switcher in there heat sinks getting pretty warm right now pretty hot let's go back to the signal and we're at 9 volts RMS just like we were before with the others one I didn't change anything I, I'm using the same source input and the only thing that changed was the uh, voltage so actually the distortion when I look at the THD meter I see 0.5 right now it was 0.14 so you know I am seeing more distortion even though now it could be because I've got I've left this guy on it's getting pretty hot so I wonder if that's here let me here let me cool that off and come back okay guys I went back I got the fan on and it's oh still really hot and i was just kind of wondering what happened with the thd and uh because the spectrum looked different too when i went back to spectrum here let me show you see that that's 16 kilohertz at the higher frequency the thd goes up I th i've seen that before so i i accidentally hit my uh generator on my phone and switched the frequency so when I go back to 1K, the THC drops down to 0.14, the same as it was with the other power supply without the switcher. So I don't see anything uh, new with the switcher. Hey guys, I think I'm pretty impressed. That seemed to work really well. I did not see any extra noise added by this. In fact, the noise level is pretty low at the 1 kilohertz signal. So I think that's a win. I think the boost regulator looks like a good good boost <laughs> a good performance boost for this class ab all right hey thanks for watching give me a thumbs up if you like this okay guys thanks a lot